Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, run it back. Good morning, everybody. I am your very, very temporary host, Chandler Parsons. Shams, it worked out, baby. Let me me introduce my panel today, Stadium Insider, Shams Sharania. Where are you at, Shams? Looks very fancy today. I'm in Chicago. I'm at an undisclosed location doing a a shoot today. So (laughs) we'll see how today goes. (laughs) We got three-time six-man of the year, Lou Will from ATL. And eight-time all-star, newly nominated Hall of Fame, Vince Carter, who just showed me videos of his six- Six-year-old son whose golf swing looks much better than mine already. Hey, well, let's back up. Newly nominated. You, you know something I don't know? Oh, yeah, it's coming, Coach. <laughs> First ballot, Appreciate baby. it. Throw it out there. Keep throwing it. Keep much throwing deserved. it. Keep throwing it. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. This is last night we had some games. Some really good games. We're going to start with the Grizzlies. Pelicans. John Moran was back. He was back in a big, big way. It's game winner in return. Six Pelicans, 115, 113. Jaron Jackson throws in 24, six and three. Uh, man, this team looked completely different last night, Lou. Have to start with Jaws, game winner. Give me your thoughts as you saw this play unfold. <clears throat> Got to give Ja credit, man. He looked good. He looked good. Coming back off a 25 game suspension, not being able to play basketball the last two and a half to three months. For this to be his first time out, man, he looked he looked well oiled. Looked like he's been playing basketball, and he was excited to be out there. You know, we also got another thing. He hadn't played in 25 games. He had fresh legs, you know, and that's gonna that's gonna be good for the Grizzlies moving forward. But man, he looked he looked great. Give him credit. And, and you know, I tell you, we all know when you miss a couple of games, one or two games, how gassed you can be. And, and obviously, he was overly excited but he was able to settle in and still be himself. He didn't do too much, but understood it was still his team. And it was just great to see the love uh, from his team because I, I, you know why they're showing him love. They're like, man, we got our guy back. Now we can hit the ground running. And you know what? I, I think they're going to they gonna make some noise. And they may knock on the door and catch some teams and, and, and possibly have the chance to get in to the playing tournament. You know, you, know, we all, we all. you know the only thing I'm worried about with that, Vince? My bad, uh, Chan. You know, the only thing I'm worried about is they they dug themselves such a hole at this point. I agree. You know, and you got you got yeah, you got Golden State still kicking. You got other other teams that still Phoenix. um at the bottom of the standings that, you know, Phoenix is still Phoenix is still right there. And obviously those are teams are, that are gonna give themselves an opportunity. They're gonna turn that light switch on. So I just think that deficit is just so deep at this point for them. I think it's still well, a wash. Well, all I'll say, I'm just saying they're gonna give themselves a chance because you you're right, they're gonna have to play perfect basketball. They're going to have to stay healthy. They're going to have to get some of their guys back. And you know, to me, Triple J is going to have to stay out of foul trouble this, this entire run for the rest of the season because he's so important to what they do as far as blocking shots and running. So, yeah, I agree. I just think he'll give them a, a, a chance and in, in a, a breath of life. I think him back will, will give them a breath of life. I'm not saying they, they will get in, but, you know, I, I like what he brought uh, game one. And we also know Steven Adams is out for the rest of the year. But like like Vince said, when they get Luke Kennard back, when they get Brandon Clark back, this is a totally – Mark is smart. They have pieces where they can kind of make that push because they're not that far behind. But watching Jaw play last night, I, I was excited to see what kind of energy he played with, right? What was his cardio? Because as players, as hoopers, we know – you can't emulate game speed. You can't. You can play five on five. You can practice, but you could tell he was winded. So, so VC, what what was the most Im- impressive part of his comeback last night? Well, one, you you, you knew he was he was going to come out here to show us. Oh, y'all must have forgot, you know, who I am and what I bring to the table for one. But what was impressive to me is that yes, he was winded, but he didn't get out of character. He, he let the game come to him. And he, I mean, it's as a starter, in, 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 in my opinion, or a guy who's a go-to guy, it's easy to kind of play your way back into it, or it's easy to kind of just, I don't want to use the word coach, but it's to play back into the flow because you're going to have the ball in your hands, particularly someone like him. So, yes, I mean, I, I knew he, he paced himself, and you could tell that he was in, in second gear, I mean, in full gear in the second half. Yeah, and obviously he he didn't hit a three. He turned the ball over five times. But as far as the first game back after eight months away, I don't know. And he was attacking. Still looked athletic, everything. The dude is an acrobat. And coming off the floor last night, you hear him screaming, 
I kept receipts too. Explain to the people what exactly, <laughs> what, what does that mean? Who's he talking to? He's probably talking to he's probably talking to me included because I still don't think this team make the playoffs with the hole that they've dug themselves. And so I'm sure he's keeping count of people that has made comments, people that have said things about the success of this basketball team moving forward since he since he's been gone. And now that he's back, you know, a lot of people have had had their their personal opinions about you know, the trouble that he's gotten into and, and the position that he's put himself in. And so, you know, he's excited to be back on the floor and he, he kept his receipts. You know, he's he going to write down everything that everybody said about him. He's going to try to prove him wrong. And, and as he should, uh, you know, uh, as he should. But he has to understand, yeah, he made the mistakes. People are going to talk about it. But at the same time, we understand the talent and where he deserves to be as far as the echelon of superstar players. He he's de deserves to be there, and we just want to continue to see him get back to that. It was more so, Ja, because of your talent, we want you to not make these mistakes off the court to keep you from being in the limelight doing what you're doing, more so than anything. And he, yeah, as he should keep receipts, and he showed us, like, this is, this is what, what y'all were talking about. Well, here I am. Yeah, and also this was never about his production on the floor. Correct. Everyone knows he's a star. Everyone knows he's must-see TV. So this was more, I think this was great. This was time for him to, to, to get away, to find himself, to mature as a man and as a better person off the floor. This had nothing to do with his talent or, you know, people being fans of his games. But Shams, uh, explain what was this process for him just to even get back to the floor last night? Chandler, he hasn't played in eight months, like he said last night. So this was a, a process over the last couple of months. He had to ramp up. He went gradually one-on-ones, two-on-two, three-on-three. You guys have all played. You know how those ramp-ups go. And it wasn't just a straight line, linear process for him. There were ups and downs. There were times where he had to, you know, he had soreness in, in his knee. He had issues, ailments that did come up during the process. And I think overall for for the Grizzlies it was making sure that he was going to be be right when it mattered most and that meant for his comeback but I think you know there were times where he, his, he dealt with some some issues some ailments and he had to go all the way back to the alter G and, and there were different points uh, in his rehab where he had to really start from scratch but you look at the condition he came in last night he, he looked like he was in peak shape Lou said it he had fresh legs and and this is a guy I watched last night. He's a superstar. He, the whole dynamic around this entire team team changed when he got back on the floor last night. He has the ability. He's not just a star. He's not just a guy that's on the cusp of being a star. He's a flat-out superstar. He can change their entire season. Yeah, BC, we talk about all year long kind of the rise of the point guard position. We talk about all the new guys, Tyrese Halliburton, Jalen Brunson, uh, you know, Tyrese Maxey. When you see John Morant in the form last night, Outside of Steph Curry, are you taking any of those cats over him? Nah. Nope. <laughs> nah. Uh, I, I think Ja is a special talent. He has everything. He's worked extremely hard on his game. When we talked about his, you know, can he make guys better? Uh, can he shoot the three? Can he, he answered the bell. Uh, I, I think Tyrese uh, Halliburton is, is right there in the conversation. But uh, when you talk about Steph Curry, and then you must talk about John Morant right on right after that. Yeah, All Star. You know how? Yeah, how fast we forget, man. After a twenty five game suspension, for him to come back, make a splash like that, and let everybody know I'm still here. I'm still him. I'm one of the top guards in this league. And so that was a, that was a great reintroduction. I'm excited to see what happens. And we keep talking about it. this is him fresh, fresh off the suspension, no real legs yet, not making down jumpers. So so when that evolves, it's only going to go up from here. Shams, we know we got job back. When can we expect Marcus Smart back in the lineup? Marcus Smart will be returning to the lineup, I'm told, either Thursday um, in their game against the Pacers at home or Saturday in Atlanta. He's been out since November 14th. He's had a foot sprain. He's been a key part. And, and a big reason why they acquired him in that trade with, trade with the Celtics was to pair him and John Morant in the backcourt. We have not seen it yet, but the hope is that Thursday or Saturday, Marcus Smart will be back in the lineup after missing a month. And this is what Grizzlies are, are they're trying to get back healthy. They're tr now they have Ja back. They're about to get Marcus Smart back. And you can see the makings of a team that has a chance, at least in the play-in tournament or like one of the late playoff seats. And on the other side, okay. Hey, real quick, I got a question. Can John Morant be an all-star? And if so, who does he take out? 
Oof. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's too late in the game now. Game, right? that, that's he, I'm just asking. Yeah, I mean, if he's playing lights out, that like, would they dare? You know. I think well, I think I think VC we get a sample West, size. And you look at the West. It's Steph, Luca, and then, I mean, Kyrie's there in Dallas. I don't that's know, but Dom, so, does he does he does he reach there. the minimum of games if he plays every single game to qualify? I mean right. it. If, he, if he's voted in as an all-star by the fans and, and the coaches, like there's a way that he can make the all-star team for sure. But anytime you miss the first 25 games of the season, I mean, what is how many games are left before all-star break? You're looking at 15 games, 20 yeah. games left. So, you know, missing the majority of the time, his back's against the wall for an all-star bid. But, I mean, listen, he he's a flat-out superstar. So will fans vote That's for what him? Saying. Like, will he get voted in? Does it count? Yeah. Do you have to have so many games? Yeah, Shams, is, is, is I, I, there I, I don't know the rules, but there has to be a minimum. All-Stars not by games. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Well, on okay. the other side, not so pretty. Pelicans blow a huge lead. Zion, another dud, scored 15 points or fewer in five of his last eight games. How concerned, Lou, are you uh, with, with Zion's performance if you're the Pelicans? I got to be honest. I'm, I'm not concerned at all. I'm, I'm not really – keying in on on his scoring abilities i'm not really worried about him going out and getting 15 or 20 points a game the only concern i would have is four rebounds is not enough for for zion he got to put pressure on the offensive glass he got to make sure that teams are getting one shot at the rim on a defensive end and he has to be an anchor at, at that rim and on both sides his presence has to be felt when it comes to rebounding, when it comes to defense. Other than that, I like C.J. McCollum taking 20 shots a game for me at night. I like Brandon Ingram being my number one primary scorer on that basketball team. And then you still got J.V., who's also a scoring big, who can put his back to the basket and go get you a bucket. So I'm not concerned with him not scoring the basketball. I'm more concerned with him having 13 points, four, three rebounds to go with it. You can't be that big and can't be that dominant of a basketball player at that size and at that stature to only get three rebounds a game. He got he to gotta be a double-digit rebounder for me. That's the, that's the concern that I have. And I, it, it, I think, Lou, that comes with – I agree with you on, on that aspect of it. It, it means staying engaged in the moment. And I, I feel like he, because he's gifted and, and can be dominant offensively, I think that's where we want more from him offensively, which will create more shots for B.I. And, and C.J. because of his aggressiveness and getting to the basket. And everybody else will eat off of that. And we've seen when he's in that mode, everybody still plays well. But like I say, I think he loses his aggressiveness where it, maybe he's not hitting shots up close, foul trouble, or whatever the case may be. Because I agree, four rebounds with you as athletic and dominant as, as you are, is unacceptable because they need you as a closer. And when I say closer, closer doesn't always have to mean putting the ball in the basket. But if you're aggressive, like he's right. able to make the right plays to guys to give them open shots as well. And we don't we're not seeing that right now. Because v yeah. VC, you know what that does? Two two or three offensive rebounds, put back, put back maybe an and one. There's your 20 right there. There's your, there's your 20 points that everybody wants to see right there. So, like you said, he has to be more engaged on the glass. He got to be more engaged every single possession. And his, uh, his uh, athletic abilities, they have to be felt. At this rate, is, is not felt. And I think that's why we feel like these games are duds because we're going lapses where we're just not feeling his presence. And we call him a superstar. We call him a superstar, and we want to put him up there with some of the greats. Well, some of the greats impact the game for 48 minutes. We just want to see it more often. We want to see it more consistent. And most importantly, we want to see this dude healthy because he is electric. Uh, moving on, the second game of the TNT last night was a real doozy. Steph Curry silences. Yes, sir. The Celtics chef is back. Warriors went 132 to 126. Steph Curry, 33, 6 and 3. Clay Thompson throws in 24 points. Lou, Steph. Peak Steph last night hits him with the baby. I thought a little prematurely. <laughs> I thought there was a little too much time there. Uh, a lot of people they're written off the Warriors. They written off Steph. What this game? Tell you last night? <laughs> yeah. Listen, any team that has Steph Curry is going to be a dangerous team until it's all said and done, and and that's proven last night. We're all pros. Sometimes, sometimes when teams are going through lapses where they're not playing as well, they can be the top team because they're talented enough, and you have a former MVP at the helm of that. And so Steph Curry, he turned into the chef. 
put them to sleep, put them to sleep, chef, and make them play hard. And so this is another reason why I feel like it's going to be an upward climb for Memphis. They got to go through this. They got to go get through this team at sitting at 50, at, at, at 13 and 14 on a season, and they're going to keep climbing. This is a team that we've known to be resilient. We've known this team to turn it on and, and have the uh, capabilities of winning eight to 10 games in a row. And so I like their chances of fighting to get in the play-in spot better than anybody else. And that's, that main reason is because of Steph Curry. And Lou, we talk, well, everybody, and they included here, that talks about what they can't do, what they haven't been doing. Clay, obviously, uh, is, is he, is he, does he still have it? Can he still shoot the ball? Steph, is he a leader? He needs to be a vocal leader. I played with Jason Kidd, who wasn't really a vocal leader, but he led by example. And when he had something to say, he said it. Same thing uh, with Steve Nash. They led by example. Well, that's leading by example. Steph's going to show up every night. He's going to go hard. He's going to play hard. And you can you can see the aggressiveness. And he's, try, he's going out there to prove something. Well, first of all, you knew he wasn't going to go another game without making a three-point shot. And, and particularly in this big, uh, big game, uh, on, on, you know, on national television, he's just going out there to show the world. And I thought Clay the same thing. I mean, Clay came out aggressive, like firing, just to show people. And you know, shout out to Clay. I got to give Clay his props. He passed me on the all-time three-point list. So I ain't no hater. I ain't no hater. <laughs> By the way, Lou, this, this, <laughs> Lou, this is one of the teams that the Grizzlies will eventually have to jump to make that run. Everyone talk about so right. Mm -hmm. Not, not, not too easy, but VC, right. we and, saw... And that's why I feel like it's tough, CP. Right. We, we Earlier in the game, we saw Jalen Brown hit Steph with a little uh, too small to pad Bev. Bad idea, VC, to poke the bear? I mean, this is the game now. Uh, and, you know, when you, 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 you do what you do, you got... Oh, man, he said too, too small. But, like, when you do that, you're going to have to live with it. And, and Steph didn't forget. He kept receipts. I'm going to get that opportunity in overtime, <laughs> and I'm going to put you all the way to sleep when I'm too small. Shams, obviously we're seeing a, a younger Warriors team. We're seeing some different rotations, different lineups. What did this win represent to you? It's, it's a sign of a new era. And I, I think Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson, we know these guys are mainstays. They're not going anywhere. Draymond Green, once he's back, he's not going anywhere. Chris Paul, Dario Sars, they're going to have support roles as well. But last night, Trace Jackson Davis, Jonathan Kaminga, down the stretch, the amount that they played, the amount the Warriors relied on them. Steve Kerr has wanted to give his veteran players, we were talking about in studio last week, he's wanted Andrew Wiggins, he's wanted all his veteran players to get as much opportunity as possible. He's relied on them. And now he's finally going with his young guys. And, and from everything I'm told in that organization, they want to see Steve Kerr continue uh, to trust Jonathan Kaminga, trust uh, Tr Trace Jackson Davis, uh, these guys have the ability to really impact the game athletically for the Warriors. And like like VC just said, we have to give Klay Thompson a lot of credit. You think about his last four games ever since that game in Phoenix where there, there was a lot of critique about him. He's averaged 27 points a game, four rebounds a game, 51% from, from three-point range. He's hitting six three-pointers a game over the last four games. The Warriors are three and one. He turned down a two-year, $48 million extension from what I'm told before the season. He bet on himself. He's playing the year out. The Warriors are playing the year out. There's going to be a lot of interest in him around the league. But you know he wants to be in the Bay. The Warriors will always want him. And the last three games, four games, him and Steph are making 10 three-pointers a game. If this continues, even without Draymond Green, the Warriors can at least tread water. Fellas, can a comeback win like this over a team that everybody has as a contender, one of the better teams in the NBA, give you that much more of a boost to propel you to kind of start believing in yourself and believing in everything you're practicing and preaching? Go ahead, Luke. I, you know what? I, I got to be honest. I don't think this team needs added motivation. I think they're ready to, they're ready to go. That win right there alone is going to propel them to get to where they need to go. And like you said, with Draymond being out, with so much talk around this basketball team that has nothing to do with basketball, I think they're ready to lock back in, settle back in, and get the get everything back on track. And so this is a great this is a great start for them. Steph Curry was Steph Curry. It was it felt good to see Klay Thompson make shots and, and be that secondary guy that he's always been throughout throughout the course of his career. So I, I'm curious to see what happens in the future going, moving forward with this group. And I was going to say, I, I don't think it matters to the veterans, the guys who's been there, who's been, you know, in situations like this more so than it means to Kaminga, uh, Trace Jackson, all of it, Moody, those guys like that, because 
this is the opportunity. And you, we talked about Steve Kerr playing these young guys. And for me, I've been, this has been my gripe for years and years and years. When, when, when coaches, you play the, the young guys sparingly, but then you get to big games or playoff moments or situations where your some of your superstar players are out. And then you look down the bench and you, the coach don't have the confidence in playing these young guys. And the young guy doesn't have the confidence to be out there or feel comfortable out there. So you got to play these guys to get them the experience they need. Obviously the, the best experience is on the court. So put these guys in situations where they are challenged, where they are tested, where they learn, because when you get to the playoffs and you, you may need these guys, they feel comfortable and you, the coach feel comfortable putting them out there. So I think this is huge for the young guys of the Golden State Warriors, more so than the vets. Hmm. And VC on, on the other side, Boston Celtics, tough road loss. They missed 41 threes last night. Something to well. be concerned of or just flush it and keep it moving? I mean, it's obviously something to be aware of. I don't know about concern. It's something to be aware of. This is, this was, this, I mean, they, this is familiar territory. These guys have played each other. This is the battle. It's almost like a, a mini rivalry. I'm not saying it's like they're all out rivalry, but they, 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 they have something with each other. So I, I, I knew it was going to be a close game, but yet when you have a Golden State Warriors team on the ropes, you got to put them away. You got to put, put them away. And I know Tatum, he played 40 minutes and he tweaked his ankle and so on and so forth, but they got to find ways to win. I thought Al Horford looked pretty darn good last night as well. Mm -hmm. All right, we got to say goodbye to Shams Karania. But coming up next, friend of the show, Jamal Crawford. There he is. Run it all. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back. Last second shot, score, pull up on the block. Jump on, Crawford. That was unbelievable. Score, 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 score. Yes, sir. Welcome back to the show, Jamal Crawford, three times six man of the year. How we doing? Great. What's up, bro? All good, All JC. nominee, too. Come on now. Oh, stop that. Come on stop now. That. Stop this. Hall of Fame. Hall of hey, Fame. I'm not doing this with you. I'm not doing this, this, is, with this you. is the This I'm is the Vince Carter you. class. <laughs> Everybody else with props. <laughs> this is the Vince Carter class. Not doing this with you. JC, we, we talked about both it. Both of y'all first ballot. Right. You both are. And, and, you and both then you know you next. Uh, JC, we talked about it. John Morant back last night after 25 game suspension in a big, big way. What are your expectations for him kind of going forward for the rest of this season? He's bringing life into not only his team, but to the city. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing, like John, he wasn't technically hurt, so he could still work out, he could still play. And then he's not coming back for a role. It ain't like, oh, you got to come back so we got our star and you got to fit in. Like, nah, you come back to be John, you come back to be him. And he did that last night. I was happy for him because Ja oh, is a great young man. I want to say kid, he's a great young man. So everybody goes through adversity. So with that, to him come back to, to make that statement on mom's birthday, like come back and, and mm. set the city on fire, hit the, the game winner on mom's birthday, first game back. First I love game winner. Yeah, and first game winner. And, and, and last night you see at the timeout, he was asking the guy, should we give the ball to, to Triple J in the post? How should we handle this closing game? He obviously missed some time. It's still obviously his team. He's the face of the franchise, face of the league moving forward. Oh, absolutely. No doubt about it. And what makes him special is his mind and how it works. I always say when I first saw him, I'm like, damn, he's a, he's a combination between D. Rose and CP, like the way he thinks the game with that athleticism. So just seeing him back, Obviously, being a selfish saying, you know what, we can go to Triple J, I ain't tripping. But they're like, nah, this is 12, it's 10, you back, bro. So, and then deliver. You know what I mean? I think that gives confidence to everybody. Absolutely. Big win for the Warriors last night. Um, Draymond out with a suspension, of course. What's, what's, your, what's your take on a suspension? And do you, do you feel like the league got this right? I think they got it right because when I first saw it, definitely I was scared to be honest. I'm like, damn, he's going to be out of wow. But then I start looking at it definitely again and seeing the steps they took. I'm like, oh, and definitely for them just means care. That they care about him as a person. They care about him, his future. It's like not just in the league, out the league. We all hear horror stories when guys get out the league and they don't have the structure and the, you know how things could go. And Draymond is a good dude. He's I know him personally. You guys know him personally. He's fiery and, and at times, you know, we've seen it work against him. So they got it right with the, the, with the suspension, but I think they got it more right with getting the, the true help that may be needed. 
Jamal, if you're on his team, you're in that locker room. If any, what, if anything, do you tell him after this, you know, last incident? Yeah, I just tell him, just remember, you know, that, that young kids out there look up to him, you know, that he has a family and young kids of his own. And just take a second to think about it because you don't want him to lose that fire. That's what makes him who he is. But I also don't want this to be what he's remembered by for his legacy. Like, Draymond's a Hall of Famer, four-time champion. Like, they need to remember you for that. One of the best defensive players ever. One of the best teammates ever. Like, Draymond has been so good over the years being a point forward that it's allowed Steph to have the freedom he has. It's allowed Clay to have that freedom. He's been the hardest so He's a thinker for the team. So I want him to be remembered that way and not by the incidents that's happened. How this team is current? How this team is currently built? You think they can win another championship? I'm not sure they can win a championship, but I didn't think they could win that last one. You know, when they went through Dallas <laughs> and then Boston either. So I, you can't really count them out. Whenever you got Steph, you got a chance. And, and Steph is, it, it's weird because as you guys know, BC is one of the greatest of all time. You one of the greatest of all time. Chandler is it was cold as ice. Like as you guys know, nobody wants to have those games with you doubt it because somehow you're going to find a way to come back. And and within that, Steph has that Absolutely. inner drive. You know what I'm saying? He has that inner drive, and that's what's even more impressive. Like, he's accomplished everything. He's done everything, but to still have that drive at 35 years old to still say, let's do this, let's go for one single game, I'm not counting on somebody like that. I feel that. With, I, stay yeah. in the, I stay in the West with you. The Clippers have figured it out. Um, eight in a row, you know that's that's you know that's my gang, that's my side yeah. right there. But those guys are Absolutely. playing great. You think they can come out of? You think they can they can put it together and come out of the West? They got a chance, and when you, when you have that much talent and they're willing to sacrifice and they kind of figure out their roles, I feel like no matter when Kawhi is healthy, and you know better than me, you play with him. When Kawhi is healthy, everything kind of has to go through him. Like he's gonna take us where we gotta go, and then we play around that. And He's not only healthy, he's engaged. You can see the, the bounce in his step when he's running. He's he's more, like, showing more emotion this year. Like, he's more excited. Like, you know, a contract years do that to everybody, right? But just the fact that him being healthy and being like, you know, I'm here, I think they got a chance because when the game slows down, that's when he's at his best. Absolutely. It's good to see him engaged, like you said, because sometimes yeah. during games you can see him. He's he's kind of stuck in his ways. He want that ball on that mid post, kind of slow the game down. He's methodical in his attacks. But how this team is built, they got to play a faster pace. They got to play a faster pace game. And so he's adjusted his game to that and it's been working for them. So I give him I give him credit for that. So we so with the Clippers rolling, how the Lakers are playing, who's the best team in L.A. right now? Right now I'm going Clippers for sure. It, it's just they figured out who they are. Like like you said, James has brought a new balance in this way. You play with both of those. We played all three. Did you play with Russ too, Lou? I played I play with, uh, I played with, no, nah, I, I that's the only one I didn't play with. That's the only one you didn't play with. So, I mean, the fact that they're playing the way they're playing, they're willing to sacrifice. James brings a different swagger. PG's rolling. Uh, Kawhi, obviously, like we talked about. And then Russ, let's talk about Russ. Because, like, how he was portrayed in L.A., the, the L.A. Lakers, like all this dude is a cancer in the locker room. Right. He's, he's one of the most giving teammates I've ever heard about. And I never played with him. This is just what I heard. And I know him as a person. And for him to say, you know what, this isn't working with all four of us. I'll come off the bench and sacrifice tells what kind of person he is. So I think that move needs to be more applauded because that move could be what saved their season and saved and got them on track by him going to the bench. Absolutely. I think it definitely showed his growth, uh, Russ's growth, for sure, as, as a man and as a player, for sure. But I want to ask you this. You know, Mac McClung was invited back to the dunk contest to uh, defend his title. You were yeah. there. What were you most impressed about his performance that night? That every dunk got better, and he didn't miss any of them. You know how it is. <laughs> like when you dunk in the, in the I love that. you didn't miss any of them. It's different when we see it for the first time and it's completed and seeing it for the eighth time and you finally got it right, right? It's like, no, nah, that ain't it. He completed right. every single dunk. The only problem was Mailman. Mailman was the black hand. He wasn't giving nobody no love, so we had to go hire us some dunk. <laughs> but everybody else just to balance things out. But no, nah, it was fun to do that, for sure. I can check that off the bucket list. And I'm going to follow up with you on that. So if you could pick any one current players, because, you know, you get wild when I ask these this type of question. But yeah. if you could pick anyone, who would you want to see him compete against uh, in a dunk contest this uh, this coming All-Star game? You notice how I preface current player. Yeah, you know I was going with it. I was yeah, I do. Cross him, but 
<laughs> any any single person that's dunking right now. Or two. Think, you can give me two. I think Sharp in Portland is one. Mm-hmm. Jaden Sharp. And mm-hmm. uh, VC, who you like? I mean, you, you dunk king. Who you like out there? I mean... I mean, Shaden Sharp would be be my one. I think that would be a great matchup. I, I mean, uh, man, uh, I, I, it's a it's a great opportunity for the league to get Ja involved. I, I, I think Ooh, so, and I, I think it'd be great for Ja. I, I, another guy we who said I would that say. yesterday. We said as part of his suspension, they should make Ja do the dunk contest. The guys <laughs> should, like Anthony Edwards. Uh, that's <laughs> the that's the other guy is Anthony Edwards. I would like to see. You know what and. If if Zach Levine was up to it, I'd be or, or Derek exactly. Jones Jr. Uh, or 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 Aaron Gordon. That would be the guys I would like to see to add. So it's kind of the the older mix and the younger mix and kind of see them kind of all go at it. I love that, but if, but if I had to pick one, I'm rolling with y'all. That that job oh. came back on the on the main stage. I'm going with y'all. I'm gonna go with Shaden Sharp. I'm still going Matt McClung. Matt got yeah. all day to dunk. I'm going Matt. <laughs> Like but can he bring, new, can he bring even dunk. more dunks we haven't seen though? <laughs> we asked him. We asked him. Uh-huh. He said he's got a little, a couple more tricks in his bag. I, 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 hey, he got some stuff. I, I've seen. I believe a lot him. of video. Uh, you know, he's out. Oh, he's out here in Orlando. He's playing for their uh, G League team. <laughs> Louis okay, Louis, but uh, but <laughs> he is playing basketball. Louis, by the way, <laughs> uh, but no, nah, he 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 he's an athlete. But I I think uh, McClung versus Shaden Sharp. I'm, That'd I'm be good, right? It. I'm here for it. Look, can I ask y'all this? Can I ask y'all this? If they had a one-on-one contest for $5 million, $10 million, and you could see whoever you want to see get in it, the best players of the best, can we do that? Could that be a thing? Could that be something people would tune into at the All-Star? It can be a thing. I, Shout out to T-Mac, first of yeah. all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Mac. For <laughs> one, for Shout sure. out to Mac. But I think that would be pretty rather interesting. Because it's a lot of guys who saying he that person can't guard me, and we saw right. Anthony Everts uh, the clip where he said, you know, he was trying to go at who was it? Uh, was it LeBron? But LeBron wasn't guarding him or something like that. Yeah, yeah you know. So I would love to see that. Uh, but you know, I, the way the, the young guys are today, and it's no disrespect, you know, they don't want to be put in that position if they don't have to to expose their brand. So. I don't. I don't know if it'll, we'll get the best yeah, of the best. Uh, yeah. I, I How much it. more fun would it be to I, watch I see it. Booker play Jason Tatum one on one than watching one yeah. of these skills challenges that everyone changes the channel anyways? And they're really going at it though, like really, really going at it. Yeah, they're going to go see anyway. I don't know. I, I see it different, though, fellas. I, I I feel like if you put these guys in a position to play one on one on national television. You might get some real sparks flying. You know what I'm saying? You have to dribble in the morning because you know how. Com- yeah, but you know how competitive we get. It's gonna turn into yeah. a hackathon, boy. <laughs> it's gonna. Well, no, that's we're a gonna, get Especially game point. Game point yeah, for sure. Hackathon. You're right. Yeah, it's, it's for sure. For sure. It's gonna get competitive and it's gonna be a hackathon. It, it, they're gonna have to go to commercial a hundred times. We ain't never gonna get through <laughs> the games. Uh, Jamal, Jamal, there's a lot of questions about the Lakers, whether they want or they should hang the in-season tournament banner. Uh, what was your take on that? Do you see this obviously sticking around? A, a lot of positive feedback from this tournament. Do you think the Lakers should have should have hung it? I think the tournament was dope, but I keep seeing that Kobe that Kobe interview. He's like, we don't hang we don't hang division banners. We just don't. But it also was the first of its kind to be recognized. I think you hang it. But I think you hang it in a smaller, you know, area with a different color or something. Because it can't look like the rest of the banners that took, you know, years and years and years to kind of accumulate. So I would hang it, but it got to be smaller and it got to be a different color just to say, okay, we did win this thing, this tournament, but it wasn't like winning a championship. It can't feel the same. I think Adam Silver was going to tell anyone they had to hang that regardless. <laughs> They're trying to keep that going. Mm-hmm. That is that that is but a promotion for, 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 the, for the future right there. You know, but, because but, that tournament is there, we won't forget it. That's why, I, you know, we don't, Marla, we were on before talking about this, but if they didn't when hang it, it, this tournament is dead, right? Like the, the, they had to. They forget about it. You forget about it. But if the Clippers end up winning that and the Clippers hang that as their first quote unquote banner, then people kind of laugh at them, right? Or no? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the Lakers got laughed at too. So it was the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's the same. It's the same. 
say a Washington wins it and their banner is way bigger than what the Lakers did, I feel like you can't really have a right answer. <laughs> right. Uh, 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 Jamal, is this something that you would have wanted to play in if they had this uh, while you were playing, or would you just look at it like this is just another game, you know, in December? CP, I wanted to play on a wet Wednesday in Utah. I want to play anywhere, anytime. It it don't matter. Whatever. I would absolutely love to play in it, especially 500K. 500K. I'm not even like money driven for real, but like just to see younger dudes who are not, you know, actually getting it like that, you would have definitely wanted to win for them. You know what I'm saying? So you can help support what they got going as well because it, I didn't think it would be as competitive. There was so many teams that were so locked in and really like in it, in it. And that was dope to see because that's what we all want, especially guys that retire. Just compete, just go at it. And so for that to translate and then win, I thought that was dope. Can I say one thing to that real quick, guys? Uh, you know, what, what I thought was cool about it is how the young guys looked up to the vets, particularly uh, LeBron James and, and right. probably other vets around. They looked up to them like, bro, he did this for us. Th- yeah, this dude who got all the sure. in the world went hard for us to win because they weren't playing. So they could they had zero control on what money. You were going to get 500 or 200, 200,000. But, you know, LeBron made it a point to say, no, nah, I got you. I got you. Don't worry about I it. Got Y'all you. chill out. You know, so I, I think what that did for them, they, they look up to that man. They'll never – bro. They, you can't say nothing bad about LeBron James to any of them young guys or any of the vets around the league for, for, for attempting to to bring money into their pockets who don't have it. And that's, and what, I, that's what I enjoyed that. about it. I, I, Go ahead. I just enjoyed that he took pride in it. Yeah. yeah, that was it. I just I enjoyed the fact that he just took he took pride in it, JC. That was that was really it for me. I just loved how he carried himself. He was excited. He got the fans involved. He was engaging. He made it exciting, you know. And he he restored order in the court. I am still the big homie. Y'all gotta y'all get in line. I'm still the big homie. How how crazy is that, DC? You played 20, 22, right? Yeah. I played twenty. Lou. CP a whole bunch of years. How crazy is that that he's at this level still? Like this level he's playing at is unbelievable. It's ridiculous. Every it's single nice. night he's still green. It's unmatched. And he has the most energy. I enjoy seeing it, man. Go ahead, Lou. Go ahead, VC. I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying. I say, I mean, he, he the, he's the oldest player. He's bringing the most energy. He's still dominant. He still wants to be on the court, and it still matters regardless of if his game 25, 12, it doesn't matter. Like, he, you still look on the court like, ah, yeah, he's doing it, but no, nah, he, he, he's the guy. He's the most dominant, and it matters to him, and that's, that's what's crazy about it at all. I mean, he can still get it how he live. Like, he looked like a young guy still. Crazy. Right. And JC, and JC, you can relate, man. You, you score 51 at, 30, at 39. You still think you can go out there and get a 50-piece out of yourself? A 50? Ooh. I don't think I can get a 50 piece <laughs> loop. But I'm telling you, on the right night, I can put up numbers. If like if you told me I had a month to really get in shape, like true basketball shape, to play at that level, and I was gonna get minutes and I was gonna kind of be featured through the second unit or whatever, I can go do numbers. But another 50 piece, that was God, bro. That was God sending me off right. <laughs> That's all that was. That wasn't me. That's that was called in the zone, my brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get lost in it. Tell you. Oh, uh, we got me, we got you. <laughs> We got Lou, we got Vince, and we get a five man of our choice. Can we beat the Pistons right now? <laughs> oh God! Hold on, right, right now. Today is in December. We get, like, we get a month training camp. We get oh, a we, we, oh, I'm about to say we we need a month training camp. Don't lie to yourself. CP. <laughs> and, 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 and we, we need a the, six we beating six the beating the hell out of the Pistons. <laughs> guys. We, just, we, we need a, we need a six or seven man. <laughs> hey CP, we got action. We got action. Don't we got action. Get, we got action. Like, I, I feel good about it. Yeah, I like our chances. I feel good about it. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, we CP, you're going to start off in the first quarter. You're going to get us going. Second quarter, I'm going to do my thing. BC, third quarter, we 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 going to the underground court to close in the fourth. We straight. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with sharing my time. Hey, I, hey, I just want to get after it. That, like, but I, 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 I don't know how it would turn out, but that would be fun, man. It would yeah, hurt fun me. As hell. You know, I'm, I'm the oldest of this panel, but it would hurt me, but I'm with you. I'm serious. <laughs> There's some Pistons watching this show upset with hey, us. No, no, <laughs> fact, but it's, it's hey, more ass I, But Lou, this is more, it, it, we probably are. I mean, but it's just competition. And I think the competition of it all is what, you know, we live for. And 
you know, I, I think it would be good for someone like them to see it. Like, bro, it don't matter. Like, we've been, t- I, I've been sitting over here for four years now. Well, it's you too, uh, Maul, but, you know, yeah. it's just, and CP, you've been out, what, how long? Three, since 2021. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, but to see the competition and how it matters, I think that's what it, what, maybe we don't win, but it just sees how it, how it matters. And I think that's what they need to kind of get over the hump. They need something. He said, he said maybe we don't. <laughs> CP. <laughs> If, if you're coaching, if you're coaching the Pistons <laughs> tomorrow, if you get hired tomorrow for whatever reason, or your assistant coach or whatever, what are you changing to break up that that mindset of losing that me in a row? What are you bringing to the locker room? What are you telling them? I mean, to me, they don't have the talent, right? There's some guys on their team that just face it that aren't NBA players. They have some future assets. I love Kate Cunningham. I love some of their pieces, but to me, it's all about effort. They got to leave it out there on the floor. You're not going to win every game. You're not going to win most games. But to me, as long as I see the effort, if I see them competing night in, night out, then I can live with that as a coach, right? We've all seen the film sessions where the next day we're like, damn, we don't, we don't want to, we don't want to watch that. We didn't box out. We didn't dive on the floor when we could have. I feel like when you have a team that's less, not as talented like them, you've got to be the best at that. You have to have the highest energy. It's not like they're the oldest team in the league either. They're young, they're fresh. So to me, I would just want to see them play harder, man, and like compete at yeah, some jump point. Jump up the game a little bit. Have some self-respect. Jump up the game. Switch it up. Put a full court press in there. You know, you're young guys. Be active. Be be. Use your energy. Use your youth a little bit more. Like I, I just feel like that's what you got to do. You you know you you have to out athlete sometimes. You know, <laughs> the, you know if you don't you know have the knowledge, well, be you, you, where's your motor? You you can control that. That's stuff that you can control. I just think you just got to switch it up, man. I'm starting the game with a full court press, just to look different. <laughs> Yeah, 94 feet, throw a 131 in there, Vince. Anything. Why not? Anything. Why, not? Is it Why not? So, hey, uh, uh, Ma, I want to ask you, who do you think right now in this league is the most underrated player that's not really getting, you know, that's not getting any any love, but who do you think is one of the most un, most underrated players in the league? Mm, I think, I don't think a lot of people talk about Darius Garland like that. Like, they talk about him as spots, and he is nice. Like, Darius Garland's nice. I love watching him. Um, obviously, I'm going to in there. Oh, for sure. He, he should be an all-star this year. Jalen Brunson's the person who other stars want to play with because he understands what it takes to win. He understands culture. He under, You can trust him. Like, he should be a face of a franchise, and he's going to get more people to come to New York. But he's all about winning, the way he plays, the pace he plays at. Uh, Lou and I both coach youth, right? So we're teaching kids to play off two feet. You can see everything clear when you get to the basket. You can see if you're open. You can see if you, you know, are, have a teammate open. Jalen Brunson lives in that space. Like, that's what he does. So he always is under control. I, I think I think SGA is cold. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's getting pub, but the way he's actually playing, my man is a problem. Like, if you really watch him, he is cold, cold. And he's doing it in a way where those other guys are okay, see, can grow so there's some dope ones out there for sure. There's a lot of talent right now. Let me ask you this. On the flip side of that, I don't like to say NBA players are overrated, but if there's any guy out there, put your coaches and your GM hat on, who, do, who would you like to see step it up? I don't think he's overrated, but I think Anthony Davis. I, I just feel like with all that talent, he has to be more consistent. Like, I was one of the ones last year, like, man, LeBron got to come out publicly and say this is your team like Wade did for him for them to really take off. Bron's done that. He's They gave you the team. You can't have 40 and then eight or, or 36 and then six. Like, he's too good for that. His talent wore so much more. He's one of the top 75 players ever, or he's voted that, right? So I think he's the one that really has to step up. I think Zion's the other one. I think Zion, people forget, Zion was going to be crowned the next face of the league. So that's why people are so hard on him. He wasn't just crowned to be a superstar. He was crowned to be the face. And then here comes Ja, here comes, you know, Wimby, here comes all these other guys that are like, just took it. You know what I'm saying? And I think with that, that's why people are, have a problem with everything he's doing. Yeah, he's doing numbers, but it's like, bro, you're supposed to be the face. And you still can do that. And hopefully when the old generation or other people are, are you know, saying things to you, it motivates you to go get that because you have that kind of talent. It's crazy because these guys aren't overrated, right? Like they're just, yeah, they're, they're not so- overrated. So no, they're not overrated. We want more, and we expect more out of them because of how good they can be every single night. Right. Uh, Jamal, recently, my guy Mark Cuban said you were the first ever draft pick <laughs> of his. 
um, that he hung out with, that he drove around. Listen, I got my own stories with him. He's very hands-on owner. What do you what do you remember? <laughs> what, what do you remember about that situation or hanging with Cubes? Just how cool he was. Like we playing rap, we just ride riding through Dallas and just just chilling. And he, it didn't feel like it, and you know CP better than anybody. It wasn't like he was an owner. Like we were really just boys chilling. And it's crazy because there's so many stories you never tell, right? But for him to bring that up, you know, that's something I would have never even brought up. But like he was just so cool, and I was like, "Damn, is every owner like this?" You know, because this is his first year, so I don't really know. I'm, I'm a rookie, so I'm not knowing what it's really like. But he was definitely one of one even back then as a translator. And it's dope to see all the success, you know, that he's had since then. And, and people don't give. We and VC were just talking about that. People don't give that championship enough credit. The one they won, like how they had to do it, the the the, the roster that they had at the time, like, mm -hmm. they don't they don't get enough credit in how he built that thing up. They, CP, you know, they were one of the first teams in the league where we actually get real food after games. And that stood out. Like, damn, we get real food? It wasn't like just something that, you know, we had to put an order in or something like that. Like, he was a trendsetter. So it's dope to see him have that success. That's a fact. That is a fact. <laughs> see, uh, I mean, see, uh, Mark, right now, the Sixth Man of the Year Award is named after John Havlicek. Yes. Should it be renamed after someone else in the modern era, perhaps uh, the Jamal Crawford, Lou Williams Award, something like that? When a Hall of Famer like you, when a Hall of Famer like you speak, we all listen. So if you if you talking like that, to be honest with you, I think Havlicek obviously was a Hall of Famer. He did incredible things, but to this generation, they're going to look at Lou and myself as kind of you know, champion that award. So with that, That's why I, I said I would, what I said. Yeah, exactly. So I would think, you know, when I see kids all over the country, you know, in gyms from just coaching AAU, they talk about both of us. It's like we're synonymous with each other. So I think it would be dope to have that award or some. They gotta be six. Man, ain't no sum. It's that award. If that award was named after us in I mean, five years, you, you, you didn't do it one time. You two did not do it one time. You two did not do it two times. You guys did it three times. Name me somebody else that's done that. I'll wait. Hey, hey, BC, and hey, that, and also, Lou, before you go, people did not want to be a sixth man. Nobody right. was like, it's a sixth man thing. Everybody, we all grew up wanting to start. So now that you see these guys, and you throw in Manu for sure, and Jason Terry, the ones before us, but even then, I still didn't hear people saying they wanted to be a sixth man. Tyler Johnson told me, Ma, I was the best player in the state. I came off the bench because I saw you, and Lou was my favorite player. So it's dope to see you know, these young guys come in the league and he just finished the league that you had an impact on. That is we need true. That. I'm going to keep it yeah. real. We need that. We need that, Lou. We need that. So, we need that. We, we I mean, need it's a that. real thing. Last, last question, about Brad, last question for quick, you, Ma. Lou, real quick. You think about the people that's gotten awards and why yeah. did they give them awards? Because of the impact they had off of that award alone. You guys have a real impact off of that award. And it's no disrespect to the, the others that you mentioned, Maul, but, like, you guys have done it multiple times. That's called impact. I'm done. And, and can I say one last thing before y'all go? When Lou, it started myself, when I didn't make All-Stars as a six-man, it killed me because I'm like, how can you ask somebody to sacrifice and do what's best for the team, but then you penalize them by saying, oh, but they're playing against second union guys, so that's why they got these numbers. And I, when it didn't happen for me, I said, it's going to happen for Lou. Lou's averaging 20-plus off the bench. They went and put him in the All-Star game. And I remember tweeting that. I remember texting him that. There's no way that he should not have been an All-Star. He's one of the most feared players in the game, period, off the bench or not. You knew what he was going to bring to the table. So don't have somebody sacrifice as a sixth man and then on the other end say, oh, but I can't put you as an All-Star because you came off the bench. That ain't right. Y'all still close games. We'll Jamal Crawford, really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, bro. Plenty more coming up next. Appreciate y'all. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Yeah, run it up. Ready, welcome back. Jamal Crawford, what a guy, what a guest. It's funny, you guys were saying something. Most people ask, oh, how many points did you have, do you have when you play a game, or do you start? And Lou and Vince made a great point. Lou, you and Jamal made it cool to come off the bench. You you made six man being such a thing to where that trophy, I'm with you, BC. That's got to be named after one of these cats. It's crazy because you know, just yeah. like you said, it wasn't cool. It wasn't cool for 
you know, or, or people didn't want to embrace the role of six men. A lot of the times, those six men, the the the, the six men that you know historically, the Ginobili's, the Vinnie Johnsons, the Jason Terry's, Crawford, obviously Lou, they finished games also. You know, so it, it's it, it's important for young guys to know. You know, it's like, do you? You want to start a game and then don't close games, or do you want to close out game being a closer? Because a lot of guys in this league getting paid to be the closer. Yes, they start, but they're getting paid to be closers. Yeah, for sure. Well, that'll do it today. Appreciate you guys. Tomorrow we have the red Minnesota Timberwolves head coach, Chris Finch. Tomorrow, guys, look forward to it. Run it over, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it over, run it back, 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 run it over. Run it back, run it back, run it up, then run it back, yeah, yeah.